happening. All of this anxiety inside of me is taking a hold of me. I'm breaking down slowly. Life worries me. Like, am I the only one that feels alone? Feels like nobody knows me. Pick up my phone, no cards or texts. Not even no messages from the ones that wrote us in. Guess this is it. Feeling hopeless. God, I need a sign. I need your hand that got me through it all. Yeah, people move it here with a Filmic Fridays kind of thing. Now, I'm sat in my car, as you can probably tell, just in McDonald's, just grabbing some lunch, because I'm on my way up to pick up Nick, and then we're going up to York to see the good old Clinton Loft House um, and crew. <clears throat> we're going to be shooting a whiskey commercial today. Um, that's all I can really say. And yeah, I'm just, I don't know, I seem to be procrastinating coming to McDonald's because uh, I've got to admit, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> um, done a few films since my diagnosis, but the, I've always travelled up there and I travel back every night. This is the first time I'm staying overnight since before my diagnosis. Um, so my anxiety levels are pretty high, I've got to admit. I didn't think I'd be like this, you know, 40 year old man. Being nervous about being away from home. I mean, come on, well, whatever. I'd be before all this. Um, you know, I'd be travelling around all over the shop and being away for a week at a time, but but or a couple of weeks. But yeah, this will be uh, this will be an interesting one. Made sure I've got my meds. Made sure I've got all the camera equipment we need. We've got a plan of what the shoot is. So I've I've got everything I can control controlled. So it's just a case of going up there and getting on with it I suppose so why don't you join me I live my life on the edge, don't need the meds I'm just dealing with being depressed and stressed Music obsessed, your lyrics inside my head When I go home and turn it off, what am I left with? I wish this anxiety inside of me would go away, go away God, I need the strength, lost in my feelings I lay my head down and pray, this is how I'm feeling I feel like I'm losing my way, yeah I wish this anxiety inside of me would go away, go away God, I need the strength, lost in my feelings I lay my head down and pray, this is how I'm feeling I feel like I'm losing my way I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. There were no um, you're sick of me. extension leads found in... Oh. <laughs> well, I'm playing, but... oh, and we've arrived. Um, so we're here at York Medical Society, which is... Brings back memories of the old career, but uh, I mean, get this place out. Whoa. This is one of their lecture halls, I believe. Um, huge, let's try and get to the right setting on the gimbal here, but huge ceilings. And uh, it's going to be overblown when I go outside, but there's a, but there's, it's just <laughs> ancient, ancient building. All very cool. Oh, and of course we're here to do a whiskey commercial, of all things, a whiskey commercial in a medical society. We note the irony, although they did used to give whiskey back in the day, Victorian times, I think. And of course, we're here with the Creative North crew, um, of which uh, myself, Nick and Dean are sort of honorary crew members, if you will, like their main cinematography kind of crew. So uh, we're here to do something hopefully pretty cool um lots of sort of slow motion kind of making the drink kind of a thing um today and then tomorrow we've got pickup shoots and a little sort of bookend cinematic sequence um story about a I think it's like a father um reconnecting with his son over a drink kind of a thing so you get the idea but yeah we'll take you into the next door where the set is uh, show you a little bit of the set dressing. Nick's busy doing that as I speak because um, he's just the set dressing master. I tell you, you need a set dresser. Get Nick. He's, oh, he's so good. Um, and it's a case of, uh, you know, get the masks on, a bit of a crew um, powwow with what we want to do and things uh, from Clinton. And then we, hopefully the actors will arrive and we can get straight on with it. It's going to be a night shoot. Hopefully it's not going to be too late, but you never know. 
but it should be should be fun um good challenge for me um i've obviously i'm a gimbal operator so i've not done handheld for a long time um and just because of you know a medical condition on the hands shaking and things but uh, in slow-mo you can't really pick that up hence we're doing it in slow-mo um so it's going to be interesting because we're going to do lots of kind of cool shots of like chucking things and landing the glass and it's all you know and it, hopefully it should look pretty cool and depending on when you're watching this um link is in the description to go over to creative north and see the final product um yeah i'll see you on set another man bruised and beaten made his way past the cellar door he gave the prisoner a knowing nod and motioned for him to follow after some reluctance he did the other man moved slowly but moved with purpose this guy knew the way out the strange man had been here before and would make sure they got out alive. Day two, let's we'll see what happens. Not a brilliant start, uh, first one here, um, which is fair enough, I'm slightly early. But uh, I think the rest of the crew might be, might be a bit on the late side. We've just got a bombing typhoon hit York. <laughs> but yeah, um, got all our gels and things this time. We did the B-roll this stuff yesterday, we're going to do the cinematic acty kind of stuff today. Um, hopefully it'll go quite smoothly because I've got a long drive home tonight so I'd like to get finished for the finish time. We'll see. Um, I guess I'll bring you back on set once I'm allowed in. The joys of indie filmmaking. No. Ragtag. Something moves and it shouldn't, gas tape. So yes. it doesn't move and it should, WD-40. There's the only two things you need in a, in a kit bag. Mm. Right. And now is we that, see, it melts through. Put it, lock, put it on low first. <laughs> yeah, let's turn this down. Let's turn it on. This, of course, is the Aperture 300D Mark II. It is good, except that you can't do colour. At least we haven't found a way to do it, so... I will think it now. <laughs> so it, in, in Little Britain, where they had the Dennis Waterman as well as... Oh, yeah! <laughs> that's the one! <laughs> What's we got the table to roll you backwards down the ramp? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the photo will go... Right in here. That door will be shut. Maybe a slight distance. So yeah, yeah. Just kind of approaching a look. And then. I thought you were going to kiss him then. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I agree with Nick. Yeah. That's, that's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like a bit of a hesitation right beforehand. Yeah. This kind of moment. Yeah, then it's kind of like a knowing. Oh. That's better. Oh. Hi, um, it is the afternoon after day two. Um, and I've got a lot of unpacking to do, hence being in the super shed. Um, yeah, it went quite well. Um, I'd say I don't know what I was worrying about, but that's kind of unfair, I guess, to myself and to my fellow, you know, mental health sufferers. It's, um, I know what I was worrying about, subconsciously. 
I knew I had nothing to worry about because I had Nick with me. Um, and Clinton and Corey are, are, are great. They're nice people. They understand all this, um, and we're very supportive. So thanks, lads. But yeah, how? But yeah, how did I react? Um, all right. Um, obviously, I'm a professional, so I'm there to do a job, and I'll get the bloody job done, and it's fine. Um, on the first day, inside at least, I was nervous as hell. Um, my anxiety was going crazy, but soldiered on, got through it. Nick checked up on me every now and again, gave me that little nod that he gives, and uh, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. And uh, it was all right. Pretty knackered on the at the end of the first night, but I think that's just because my brain had been going overdrive all day, and I was just, you know. But got up mostly okay in the morning, and second day um, it was much more my speed anyway because it was sort of a drama film kind of thing, which is more my bag anyway. So um, yeah, we've got some good shots, I think. Shout out to Spiffy Gear, um, they saved our arse on our second day. Um, we used the Lumi wristbands in the window to create like New Year's Eve fireworks outside the window you might have seen on the previous b-roll. And we used the speculars to sort of light various areas of the set with some um, orange gels on them to sort of match the light we were going for. So yeah, we're well, attack where we will there. Well, that's one spiffy gear. They're not bad, not bad at all. But I think that I'm here, I'm okay, and we got the shots is testament to any of you guys out there who maybe are a bit nervous about hiring people with, mental, with existing mental health issues or, or, or anxiety or PTSD in my case or whatever. I'd say to all your casting directors, uh, all you sort of crew member getters out there, all, all my friends on, on social media who, who are in the industry, don't be frightened to do so. I mean, obviously, it's illegal to not give someone a job based on the fact they've got a mental health existing condition anyway, but don't be nervous about it anyway. Um, most people you don't even notice. Um, the only give, the only like the tell for me, for example, um, like that first day I felt like crap, so I was in between takes, of course, making loads of jokes and trying to make everyone else laugh because I felt like crap and I didn't want anyone else to feel the same way I did. Um, and that was my tell. That's when, when Nick started going, you're right, you know. But it's fine. Um, with minimal support, anyone you hire with an existing condition like mine can be an excellent part of your team. Um, you know, I'd say to those people like me who, who are trying to get into the street or any job, really, you've got an existing condition and that's putting you off and making you nervous, don't be nervous, just be mindful of your symptoms and figure out a way ahead of time if you can ways to get around them so in my case if i need to step off set i will obviously in between not take I'm, if they're going to be taking ages redoing the lighting or something at that point i'll step off set for a second and i'll go nick, i don't announce it i'll just go nick dean whoever's there uh, cover for me for two minutes and they're like yeah all right and then i'll cover and i'll come back no one notices you're gone you know things like that just cover for it and respect your employers and hopefully they'll respect you back yeah mutual respect that's what it's about it's easy anyway i hope that was enlightening um i just wanted to show a bit of warts and all of, of how i was actually feeling some days you do you know most days i'm okay but some days you do have something that you have to do and and this kicks in and you're like oh come on not now and that's what it was like so i wanted to make this vlog a bit about that and how i was feeling and how it made me feel and how people who are surrounding you or one whatever can help support that person and obviously the needs of whatever it is you're doing it's pretty easy really isn't it but for more stuff like this you can go to rebel north creative um just here and if you want to see more from team reflector you can find out all our stuff by clicking down here and the links are in the description as well depending on where you are looking at this until next time i've been Mubit. You've been awesome, Sauce, and I'll see you in the next video. Ta-ra!
Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Wash your f***ing hands! I like to move it, move it, fit, fit, fit.